Hey, everybody. Welcome. It is uh, Monday, uh, March 23rd. Uh, as you can see, I'm filming the show from at home because I'm on lockdown uh, because of the zombie apocalypse. But it is time for 62 Who Knew, and not even a national state of emergency is going to stop us from coming on and bringing uh, some great news and some great um, relevant and timely information uh, to our base. So thank you very much, even though I'm not in studio, to our producer, Mr. John Gaston, who is also the um, founder of We Beam TV for making this happen. I don't have my picture of Superman behind me like I do in the studio. I have my six foot three statue here protecting me from all viruses and all forms of, of uh, illness. So uh, thank you very much. Before we go on, and um, and introduce tonight's guest, which I'm so excited to, that's here because he's here for the third time. I want to thank last week's guest um, from Home Instead, Mr. Colin Castle. It's always a great show. The statistics he gave uh, about the co uh, coronavirus uh, kind of incredible, incredible. But it also almost gives me the chills um, that if it was today, how many more people have been affected? How many more people have died? And the last I checked, which was a few hours ago on the news, there are now 144 countries being affected by this. And that, that's, it's amazing and terrifying at the same time. Um, so let me do a quick thank you, Colin, for being here last week and doing that for us. Uh, let me give a quick synopsis of what 62 Who Knew is, an unusually quick one, and then bring on our guest because I really want him to have the majority of time tonight. So what is 62 Who Knew? Our fathers, their fathers, I should say our parents, their parents, and their parents before them, as they approached the age of 62, pretty much all had the same thoughts. Should I take my Social Security? Should I defer to the later date? Should I keep working? Do I have enough saved? Should I pay off my house? Should I get rid of my life insurance? Do I really need long-term care insurance? It's not time to talk about Medicare supplemental policies yet because that's three, three years away. Where do, where do I invest? The stock market, which is volatile? What, what should I do? There's all these types of questions. Should we move? Should we downsize? And the truth is, almost everyone, unless you live in the top 1% of the country economically and financially, almost everyone has had the same questions for the last several decades, for the last several generations. And our generation, when I say our, I mean mine, because I'm 61 and a half, we have those same questions, but we have one extra obstacle. Uh, many people consider it a blessing. Many people consider it a mixed blessing. Our blessing, that mixed blessing, that double-edged sword, is longer lifespans, whereas our parents and our grandparents and their parents plan to live in their 70s, and if they're lucky, maybe even to their 80s, as most of us know, if you live to be 65 in this great country, just live to be 65. You have a 50-50 chance of making it close to 90. And if you do the math on that, 65 from 90, who knew that when you first start thinking about retiring and thinking, should I work? Have I worked enough? It's been 30 years. That you still have 25 or 30 years left on this earth. And the truth is, as I mentioned before, only 1% of this great country is actually financially capable of going through that last 25 or 30 years without assistance, whether it be working through their 60s and 70s, a financial planner, a long-term care provider, a reverse mortgage professional, a life insurance professional, a Medicare professional. That list is also endless, and that's the list of professionals that we try and bring on every week. This is our 67th week. Uh, we have gone from, obviously, an audience of zero uh, to a little above 80,000. So, obviously, our principal, that's per week, 80,000 per week, our principal, our platform of wanting to talk about how longer lifespans is affecting us seems to have been accepted by the public. We're going to try and get deeper and deeper through 2020. Um, but tonight, uh, we're bringing on an expert uh, that is near and dear to my heart, not just because of his topic, but we also happen to be friends. And of course, tonight's topic is reverse mortgages. Um, and uh, many of you know, you know that that's my daily job when I'm not trying to be a, a television show host. Uh, I'm in the reverse mortgage world as well. 
Um, but I love bringing on other people, specifically this man, uh, because it seems, for lack of better terms, amazingly self-serving for me to tell you how great reverse mortgages are, when to use them, when to not. So to have a third party here, especially this third party, is really very exciting to me. So I did that in less than a couple of minutes, which is a record. And without further ado, let's bring on Mr. Stephen J. Sluss, a very, very well-known national reverse mortgage ex expert. Thank you for being here, Stephen. My friend, thank you for having me back. Great to be with you. Hope you're keeping safe. Oh, yeah. My children don't want me to leave the house. Um, um, there are certain areas of the government that don't want me to leave the house, but that's got nothing, <laughs> that's got nothing to do with the virus. That's another show entirely. No, I, I'm, I, I was one of those people that I'd say until about a week ago was, I know this is serious. I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to wash my hands. I try not to go out in public too much, but come on. The press is over, over hyping this. They're dramatizing it. They're scaring the world. I changed my mind six, seven days ago. We're, this, uh, this great country, this, this uh, world is in a very unusual spot. And uh, here you are from home rather than um, in your studio. You have a beautiful studio at your home. I don't have a beautiful studio at my home. I'm in my living room. Um, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all my business from home for the next two to four weeks. And uh, we're going to see what happens because at 61, uh, I don't want to catch this. I already have asthma, so I'm on the list. You're not young and healthy like you. It's uncharted waters for all of us, right? I, you know, you, we, we need to be in it together and taking precautionary steps. And I, I too, was in a, in a similar boat as you. You know, I thought, maybe, yeah. It's it's the flu, or it's another version of the flu, and it's going to go away. Well, it doesn't seem like it's going away. Uh, I, I would venture to say it's likely going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, Absolutely. You know, ha having a exclusive senior clientele, you know, we worry about our clients. We've been calling to check in with them, making sure they're taking the precautionary steps needed uh, to hunker down, stay in place, uh, tune in tonight, yeah. and hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, be be informed and be educated continue to watch the local news uh, and, and just uh, make sure that, you know, at least you're getting the, the groceries that you need. Hopefully you're able to, I know here in Baltimore, it's, it's challenging. I was here at the store on the weekend, two hours to get through the store. Uh, an hour and a half of that was spent at the checkout counter. So it's just, it's, it's unprecedented times. And, and the, the scary thing is there really is no precedent to look back in, in, in a yeah. period in history and say, well, this is how we overcame this when it happened before. This is this is first time for all of us. Yeah, people are complaining about the government. I don't, you know, I try not to be political on the show. I'm beginning to learn that I might have to be one day, um, but I'm trying very hard not to be. You know that the government isn't handling it correct. Blah blah blah. No one could have handled this correct. This hasn't happened in a hundred years, and it's right. time to stop. Uh, you know, laying blame and just start fixing it. And I think they're doing a fairly good job right now. Um, I know the stimulus bill was was uh, stalled in Congress today, and nothing's changed that way. If you talk to uh, people on the left side of the aisle, it's the people on the right side of the aisle's fault. And if you talk to people on the right side of the aisle, it's people on the left side of the aisle's fault. So the fact that people are dying has not changed the morons in Washington on either sides of the aisle. They still keep playing their games. And, and I don't even want to talk about that too much, but that's very sad. It's, uh, it is. It yeah. is. You would, I would think learn. that this is this is the time, you know, the, the only thing in my lifetime that I can relate this to is 9-11. You know? Exactly. It's, it's very different, but it's a national crisis, and it's a time for everybody, regardless of what side of the aisle you stand on, to come yeah. together, rally together, and, and just move forward in, in the sake of the better good. And yeah. we'll all get through this. This, too, will pass, but it's going to take everybody working collectively, especially those in Washington, working collectively with one goal in mind, and that's to get back to some sort of normalcy and, and saving all the lives that can possibly be saved. Yeah, I don't know if they can work together collectively, and I, and I, I'm, I hate those words coming out of my mouth, um, but I just don't know. You know. I've learned a lot in the last week. I really have. One major thing that I've learned is the next time we have a pandemic, I'm shorting toilet paper stock. Um, that's <laughs> that, I, I'm going to be so rich. The next time we have this, because I'm shorting toilet paper. So I, I think everybody should be buying Weight Watcher stock right about now. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Oh my God. So, but let's talk. 
you know, let's get away from that for a second. And uh, let's talk reverse mortgages because, uh, you know, the last time you were on, you have a picture of, uh, of your daughters right there behind you. Yeah. Um, uh, your, your youngest daughter was just a few days old the last time you were on. That was 15 months ago. And uh, I know we discussed how the product is still misunderstood, you know, by mainstream America, by mainstream financial community. And it would be so nice to say 15 months later, boy, isn't it better? I think it might be a little better, uh, a little thanks bit. to people like you throughout the country, quite frankly, but not a lot. Still running into that, oh, my God, they take my house, they this, they that. Um, I watch all the stuff that you do. I don't do a fraction of what you do. And it's, um, it's incredible. You are getting the message out there. If we could clone you and a few other people <laughs> like you, it, it would be really good. There, there's, there's, a lot of, there, there's a lot of caring um, it reverse mortgage professionals across the country, yourself included. You're one of the best in the country. You know, and I, I know this show isn't meant for you to be self-serving, but you are. And, and the, <laughs> the audience should know how great you are at what you do. Thank uh, you and very that's much. Traditional and reverse mortgages. But, you know, we're, 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 we're changing the conversation about a product that has needed the conversation to be changed for 30 plus years, right? It, for, for, for three decades, I think reverse mortgages have been marketed improperly. Uh, they've been widely misunderstood, often misrepresented, uh, and it does take the entire industry uh, and the financial planning community as well to rise up and say, well, this, these are the numbers, right? For, for most folks over 60 years old, the majority of their wealth lies within their four walls. Wouldn't it make sense to just have a conversation about using all of their assets to create a holistic retirement plan and not just some? Yes. Right? And at the end of the day, it's just a mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's a mortgage that provides a lot more freedom and flexibility for the older homeowner, but it is a mortgage. And so, no, you can't lose your home as long as you pay your taxes, pay your insurance, and maintain the home. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, options and a lot of flexibilities that the reverse mortgage provides to allow the senior homeowner to access that source of the lar the largest source of their net worth, which is their home equity. Exactly. And, you know, it's not it, what, what frustrates me a lot. It's not just, our, you know, I love when you say at the, at the end of the day, it's just a mortgage. And it is. But, you know, not only are detractors, but many so-called experts in our industry may be in an effort to show their expertise, not in a bad way. I mean, the, the reverse mortgage industry is a, a staggeringly noble industry. Um, just great people, but I some even people are in in our industry overcomplicate it. I mean, yes, there are sure. there are more options after the last borrower dies. Yes, there are options: the credit line, the you know, the lump sum, the fixed payments, the lifetime pay. But still, it's a mortgage. Right. Take a deep breath, and it's it's not as complicated as our detractors, and sometimes um, local state governments, as you know, probably New York just. Uh, has some yeah. sweeping laws that New York lenders can't even figure out. You know, yeah. to, in order for the reverse mortgage to stop taking advantage of seniors, it, it's just a terror. Yeah, you know, if they said it to protect them more, I, I'd almost be okay with that. But everything I read about it was to stop our industry from doing all those bad things. We're not doing bad things. We did. There was a point in the past, but what bad things are we doing? And and I would say, you know. It, it, the reverse mortgage has been around since, uh, what, 1988, right? It's a, it's a relatively new mortgage product. And so for the first 20-some, 20 25 years of its, of its existence, I don't, I don't necessarily think it was the industry doing bad. I think it was, this is the new product. Let's, ident let, let's figure out how it's really being used. And I think it was utilized incorrectly because of a lack right. of education, right? Today's reverse mortgages are very, very different. And, and from 2015 on, the rules, the regulations, the safeguards that have been put in place have transformed the product from a loan of last resort, which it was never meant to be. That's right? exactly right. The, the reverse mortgage is not meant to be a Band-Aid on an open wound. It's, mm -hmm. it's designed to be a piece of the puzzle, uh, another bucket of money for you to help navigate your retirement. And I think once the industry figured that part out, Let's let's get away from classifying this as if I'm if I'm destitute and need money, I turn to my reverse I turn to a reverse mortgage last. Right. That, that that's where the problem starts. Exactly. If you're already somebody that can't afford their retirement, 
you can't afford the home you live in, you can't afford the taxes and the insurance, being able to take some equity out isn't going to solve that. It's going to, it's going to prolong the inevitable. Yes. And the inevitable is you shouldn't be in the home. And, that, and that's yeah. not to say that you did anything wrong in retirement or you planned incorrectly. Sometimes circumstances change and you have to right. downsize. Um, but when you plan accordingly and you, and you plan using all of your assets, housing wealth being one big asset, you can create a safer and a more secure retirement. But even the, the media is misinformed. Um, you know, the, the government is misinformed. You know, how, how many times have I sat down with, uh, you know, I, I was, I had the uh, uh, benefit of meeting with a local senator here a few weeks ago, and we sat down and we chatted about reverse mortgages. He didn't understand how reverse mortgages worked, and no. he's a U.S. senator. Mm -hmm. and so come on, let, let's, let's be real. Let's, let's understand that for seniors, a large portion of the wealth that they've created is in their home. They put that wealth there, and maybe they need to get some of that out now. The reverse mortgage is a great vehicle to help them do that. No, ab absolutely. And it is amazing how many people judge us that actually don't know anything about us. <coughs> I'm going to keep the USA articles, the USA Today articles, for a little bit later in the show because I want to yeah. talk about something excuse me, that you did that I thought was just incredible. You went and got educated and got the designation of CLTC. And I want you to explain that to our viewers exactly what that is. Yeah, so CLTC is certified in long-term care. Um, I don't sell insurance. And so why, why, would some, why would a reverse mortgage professional get uh, a designation for somebody? Uh, that, you know, ideally, this is supposed to be for somebody who sells long-term care insurance. Yes. Uh, I don't sell long-term care insurance. What I wanted was I wanted to educate and empower myself and the real goal, the end goal, was to have just a deeper knowledge base and a deeper understanding of what my clients are dealing with on an everyday basis, right? How much does long-term care truly cost? What are options as far as long-term care? Uh, does Medicare or Medicaid cover long-term care? And what I learned was it sure does if you want to live in a nursing home for the rest exactly. of your life. Um, and, and so it really was, it was an unbelievable course that just... It was, it was really eye-opening because it, it, it opened my eyes to uh, an industry that is similar to the reverse mortgage industry. The long-term care industry is widely misunderstood, often misrepresented. And there's a lot of uh, misconceptions and myths about that industry as well. Uh, I learned that long-term care insurance <laughs> isn't as expensive as many people think it is. Um, but I, I really just wanted to set myself apart from the competition uh, I believe I'm one of only two or three reverse mortgage experts in the country that have that designation. Yes. Uh, and one of my initiatives going forward is to be to, to bring our industry and the long-term care industry together, you know, for the better good of the consumer. You know, can, can, can consumers come to myself and be educated on not only how to use the wealth in their home, but also how to create a better lifestyle, how to create a better life for their children and grandchildren who are the ones that are dealing with the burden of care as well. Um, so it's really, it was an eye-opening uh, experience. It was a fabulous experience obtaining that accreditation. And I, and I highly recommend it to anybody that works with uh, seniors for a living. Yeah, yeah there's no doubt. And for the last 10 years, I have been saying, writing, anywhere, anytime somebody will listen to me in any type of venue, that, the, that if you actually go to a long-term care if you or I went to, and we should do that when, when you're together, um, go to a long-term care insurance convention. Go in the middle of the convention room and just close your eyes and listen. You would think you're in a reverse mortgage convention. Yeah. There's people going, I don't understand. Why did the newspaper say that about us? It's not true. Why are they saying it's so expensive? It's not expensive. What, what do you mean the government said that we are basically – you know, opposite sides of the same coin. And I've been saying for the better part of a decade, maybe a little more, um, and, and, and in my own little way, I've made some attempts and failed. Um, <laughs> I think these two industries, long-term care insurance and reverse mortgages, should not just be working with each other. They should be joined at the hip. These are our people. Oh, no now, there is, there is a slight difference, and, and I respect that, and I, I'm glad for it, um, is that right now, the perfect time to buy long-term care insurance is in your 50s when you're healthy. We yeah. can't help those people. 
as reverse mortgage people. But there are people, and I'm going to go with 60 years old and above, because now we have proprietary products that you can be as, as young as 60 rather than 62. 60 years old to 65 to 68, there are people out there that are healthy, and I'm not talking thousands, I'm talking hundreds of thousands, that can have an affordable long-term care insurance program, and maybe even they can't afford it, but what's stopping them is not just the myths of long-term care insurance, oh, it's nursing home coverage. No, it's not. It's anti-nursing home coverage. You get to right. be home. You get to live longer. But what's stopping them, even people that could possibly afford it, I always do this money-wise, is let's look at that average 60 to 65 years old. Obviously, you have your premium on your car insurance. That's a law. You have to have car insurance. Mm -hmm. Many of them still have life insurance. You then have your health insurance of some type until you're 62 and go on Medicare. So you have that. You have your, um, what other insurance premiums do we have? We have homeowner's insurance. If you live in a flood zone, you could have flood insurance. Flood insurance. Um, you are premium to death as you get older. That's not a cast of dispersion upon the insurance world. These are incredible products that protect us. But I'm sure you see it. I, I write applications for people or review applications. They can have $1,000 a month in premiums. Now, yeah. the mortgage world doesn't count that as ratios, traditional or reverse. That's great. But $1,000 a month. And then you come across and say, now you and your wife really need long-term care insurance. Now, how many premiums can I take? Let's just pay off their mortgage. And now they can afford, because they won't have a payment, the best long-term care insurance in the world and have extra money, extra money. That's, but that's a great point. It's a great point. And, and you know, we, we can help those <clears throat> later in life, right? So if you, if you have, uh, you know, if you're in your 50s, you take out a long-term care policy, maybe it's affordable in your 50s, maybe it's affordable in your young 60s, maybe it's still affordable in your late 60s, young 70s, but it's not quite as comfortable as it was when you first took it out. Well, what if you have a mortgage payment that's $1,500 a month or $2,000 yeah. a month and a reverse mortgage can eliminate the need to make that mandatory mortgage payment, mm -hmm. free up that cash flow and allow you to continue to fund that insurance policy. And that's mm -hmm. just one example. There's a lot of ways that the reverse mortgage can help be a, a funding vehicle for long-term care, for life insurance, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have clients all the time that say, Steve, I, I don't, I'm worried I don't want to take a reverse mortgage because I want to leave a legacy to my children and my grandchildren. Well, that's what life insurance is for. That's exactly right. right. Life, life insurance can, can ensure that you're leaving a guaranteed check to your loved ones. But in the meantime, let, let's figure out ways to use your assets the, the, in the most wise manner possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we, you come to times where, where you know, now the, with the market you know, fluctuation over the past few weeks, uh, now more than ever, Folks need access to home equity because that's where their wealth is. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and we can touch on that later on. I know we wanted to touch on that later on in the show. But uh, the, the, bottom line is, yeah. the, the bottom line is the, if the home is where the wealth is, what are the options to take it out? That's right. Option number one would be a traditional mortgage. It's what everybody knows. Everybody's comfortable with it. But if you're 70, what's, what's your typical term on a mortgage? It's likely going to be 15, 20. Or 30 yeah. years. Well, more likely 30 for them to qualify. And then, so, so, so 30 years. You're 70 years old. To get cash out of your house, you're going to burden yourself with a mortgage payment into your late 90s or to your 100 years old? That's absurd. To me, that, to me that's madness, right? Yeah. Because later in life, cash is king. Most people think when I retire, my expenses are going to go down. They don't. The reality is they go up. They go up. Um, so let's come to option number two, a HELOC, right? Just a home equity line of credit. You can walk into any bank and, and get them relatively easily. Uh, although, if, if you're older and on a fixed income, not quite as easy as you may think. Correct. But let's say you do take one. Uh, typically, these terms are interest only for the first 10 years, and then you're going to have a, a regular mortgage term. And so, again, you're burdening yourself with a monthly mortgage payment later in life, into your 80s, 90s. And you mentioned longevity at the, at the beginning of the show. People are living into... They're late 90s, even over 100 nowadays. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have a mortgage payment the entire rest of your life? I wouldn't. 
Oh, yeah. uh, I know I wouldn't want my parents to or my grandparents to. And so the third option is a reverse mortgage. And, and a reverse mortgage is similar to those other type of products. It allows you to gain access to the wealth in your home, but it allows you to do it in a very strategic and a tax efficient manner without the burden of a monthly mortgage payment. And that's at the end of the day, what sets it apart from any other type of mortgage loan out there. And there's really nothing else right. like it. There's nothing, there's no other mortgage product that rivals what a reverse mortgage can do. But you have to be educated. You have to sit down with a professional, Michael, like yourself or, or me or any, any other reverse mortgage professional across the country. And you gotta have the conversation. Uh, yeah. Don't listen yeah. to what the media has to say. Don't look for information online because uh, you just don't know what you're finding online. Find and identify a reverse mortgage professional. Sit down and have a conversation with them. You know, the, the, you know, you know the, the, the funny thing, Michael, is in the long-term care world or in the reverse mortgage world, right? Ask, ask anybody who has long-term care insurance that's on claim right now if they regret taking out that policy. That's exactly right. Oh, my ask, God. Ask, yeah. ask anybody that has a reverse mortgage that's seen the benefit of a reverse mortgage and how it can help to protect and yeah. prolong their right. retirement if they regret it. But the proof's in the pudding. Right? Yeah, Find there's no doubt. Those who have these policies and ask them about it. Yeah. And you know, you, you've always had habits since we've met and since I've listened to you speak of hitting the nail on the head. And, and you just did in a couple of different ways. To me, it's just let's forget how much you and I love reverse mortgages because, you know, we could be a little biased. It's our passion. Sure. But whether you're 30 years old or 75 years old, mm. we can't afford our present payments. What do you think we should do? Let's go get another payment. It just doesn't make sense. I don't care if you don't like the reverse mortgage or not. If you're not being able to afford your present lifestyle for any reason, and you know, you and I see some good reasons too, um, helping their children, helping their grandchildren. You know, the story isn't always I ran out of money or I lost it in a Ponzi scheme, although we see that too. Um, we not just the last two weeks of the coronavirus, um, but we're seeing a very unusual decade, you know, where, where, where I hate saying seniors because I'm this age, where people in their 60s and 70s, you know, are literally doing more for their children and grandchildren out of love that they never thought they would do because of the volatile times, you know, the volatile economic times of this country. And, um, you know, there's just so many good reasons to use this. And every now and then I do make a video. There's reasons not to use it. I always want my people to think that Absolutely. you listen to me. You know, it's not Absolutely. the cure-all. Sometimes when I see a reverse mortgage person, a nice one with a heart in the right place, but on Facebook or LinkedIn going, everybody over 62 should have one. No, not everybody over 62 should have one. Um, but this, you know, before we talk about a few other things, again, I want to get back to this relationship you know, between long-term care insurance and, um, and reverse mortgages. But let's take reverse mortgages out of it for a second. And uh, who did you have as a teacher when you took the class? I had Bill Comfort, who's actually been uh, a guest on your show yeah. several times. Yeah, listening to Bill speak to me is like listening. Amazing. You know, to, yeah, isn't it? I mean, it just it's soft and it flows. And uh, a, a very uh, a common friend of Bill and mine, uh, when I didn't know Bill, I'd say almost 10 years ago, I was speaking at a national long-term care convention, I think in Texas, about the relationship of reverse mortgages and long-term care. And this friend who, who is like a mentor to me and part of my family, uh, uh, Mr. Peter Gelbwax, who is a legend, quite frankly, in the long-term care business, said, you think you can speak? Come here. I want you to hear something. And I go, yeah, you know how speakers are. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be a great speaker. I sat down and listened to this man and just went, oh, my God. I got a lot, not a lot to learn about long-term care because I didn't know anything at that point, but I think I'm a professional speaker. Listen to this man. Right. And uh, one of the things that he always said that stuck with me now for 11 years is that, you know, need, you know long-term care insurance is not about a product. It's not a thing. And he probably said it in your class. It's mm -hmm. an event. It's something that happens in your life. And, um, you know, there are, there are, Statistics out there, most of them agree two out of three of us are going to have um, a long-term care event. Um, that's what most people feel. Um, but I also love the way Bill puts it, that if you want to forget all the statistics and everything, 
You're either going to need it or you're not. It's 50-50. Because for you, it's 50-50. Forget all yeah. the other. And it, it, with longer lifespans, it's just a needed product. And I don't have an insurance license either. Um, so I don't want anybody to think, my God, why is he, why is he hawking insurance? Right. Um, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands. I might dare to say millions, but I'm not sure about that, of people who don't, who want long-term care insurance. They don't have to be sold. They want it, but they think they can't afford it, but they have that $1,200 mortgage payment. And if they're 60 years old and above, you can afford it. And you and I both know that policy for husband and wife is not going to cost anywhere near 1200 a month. Let's get rid of your mortgage payment, get you the best care, the best coverage, and still have a lot of extra money for cash flow, yet we can't get these also, two industries. Like there's, also, there's also those who think they can't afford it, who have mm-hmm. maybe a free and clear home without a mortgage yes. payment. You know, that you can, turn, you, you can turn that wealth into either a monthly payment, a line mm-hmm. of credit, or cash. Now, you know, the long-term care expert can't say, go take out a reverse mortgage to fund my long-term care policy. That's and right. we, as reverse mortgage professionals, uh, you know, and, and fiduciaries as well, because mm-hmm. we are, at the end of the day, fiduciaries. You know, we don't, right. we, don't have to, we don't have to be in our industry, although we are. The good yes. ones are. Yes. Uh, you know, it, and if you're a true fiduciary, uh, how about setting up a reverse mortgage or, or, or a funding vehicle for the client that enables them to go take out a long-term care insurance policy to be able to have that extra comfort later in life? Uh, you know, and, and one thing that Bill pointed out in the class as well that really stuck and resonated with me is a long-term care policy is not for you. It's for your children. It's for your loved ones. You know, no one gets the ones that. that are going to have to take care of you. And Bill puts it a lot more bluntly than that. You know, and yes. if you follow Bill on social media, uh, he'll, he talks about manning up, right? Mm-hmm. Man up and man up and take care of this so your kids don't have to take care of you. That's uh, right. I, I, I typically am not that blunt, but look, at the end of the day, he's right. Your, your kids are going to be the ones or your loved ones are going to be the ones that have to come in and step in and alter their lifestyle to take care of you where if you understood all the options available to you, maybe, maybe you want it again, but you don't think you can afford it. Take the steps necessary, become educated. I guarantee you, you'll be surprised. One, and how inexpensive some of these policies are. Two, the options that are available to you. There's, there's a lot of innovation in the, in, in the insurance world, like there's been innovation in the reverse mortgage world. And this is recent, over the past just couple That's of years. Right. So mm-hmm. if you haven't looked into reverse mortgages lately, you should give them a second look. If you haven't looked into long-term care or extended care uh, insurance, you, you, owe, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. Give it a second look. Become educated. Become empowered so you can make a well-informed decision for you and your loved ones. Right. Well, and I'm going to bring up what has always been considered a taboo subject by our industry. Uh, we won't mention why and who, and maybe we will if I'm in a really good mood in the next few minutes, but I don't want to be too much of a... I mean, you know what, disturba. But, you know, for the first time ever in 2019, um, the hybrid products of long-term care outsold the traditional products. Mm-hmm. Um, and for our viewers, although uh, Bill Comfort and probably you at this point in time, and uh, Mark Goldberg, one of our study guests, uh, who is also a national long-term care person, um, has explained that. But a hybrid product combines two. And, you know, the ability... To write a check, and everybody, to my 80,000 listeners, viewers, hold through me through this sentence. Don't go, what, is he crazy? I can't write that check. <clears throat> the ability to write a check for $100,000 or $150,000 to buy a single premium life product. There's your legacy for your children because you're paying for it all up front. You have a magnificent death benefit. It's a multiple of anywhere from two to five, depending on your age but that has a long-term care insurance rider connected to it is one of the most staggering products the financial world has ever seen. But how many people can write a check for 100 or 150 or 200,000? And quite frankly, in the past, if your home was free and clear, um, thinking of taking a reverse mortgage for a lump sum and doing that was just taboo. And um, it may be considered taboo, But the bottom line is, if it's the proper decision, this is Michael Banner's opinion, 
certainly not the reverse mortgage world's opinion yet, but if that is the proper financial decision that makes that client stronger when you leave that house than when you went in, you left them stronger, then yes, you can do it, although I know I'm going to get 57 emails telling me, Michael, you're crazy. You're not allowed to do that. It's against the Claire McCaskill cross-selling law. Wrong. If it is the correct now, if that client has $100,000 in their money market at a half a percent, shame on you, reverse mortgage professional, for saying that the reverse mortgage is the proper way to go. But if it is the least expensive or in many cases the only option for people to have this tremendous coverage that you know they're going to need, you know they're going to need it, then it is proper and it's ethical and it's moral. And I would argue your, your, your example of 100K in a money market account, you know, there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with using that money to fund the long-term care policy, but taking out a reverse mortgage line of credit to help replenish some of the funds that you took out to fund the long-term care policy and to use that line of credit if and when needed uh, throughout the rest of your retirement. There's a lot of options that are available. There's a lot of ways to structure and tailor the proper long-term care policy the proper reverse mortgage scenario. But again, it, it, it starts with a conversation. And I think all right. too long, you know, folks are hesitant to have these conversations because these are products that either they don't understand or they're confused about. But you, you got to take the initiative. It's one thing to become educated. It's another thing to become empowered. And it's a whole other thing to actually use the education and empowerment and make a wise decision. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it, and there's such bad information out there that it's sad. Um, you know, I, I, I used to hesitate on, on uh, mentioning this name, but I don't hesitate anymore. Um, you know, Dave Ramsey, you know, what he's, it, it should be against the law. Forget yeah. that it hurts my feelings and our opinion. This man is giving out blatantly false information to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of his followers. I've gone on a couple of his strings and said, but what he just said is not true. It's right. simply not, the bank doesn't own your house. And I've had hundreds of hate, ma hate replies going, how dare you say Dave Ramsey is wrong? Dave Ramsey is the Helen Keller of reverse mortgages. This man is, is a danger. Now, yeah. his theories of don't spend the money till you have it, the people, you know, the young people that sign up for his, there's a lot of logic in what Dave Ramsey tells young people. But my God, on reverse mortgages, man, pick up a book, read something. Well, look, if, if you're not a believer in the concept that you should use all of your assets in retirement, right? If you're not a believer in that, that's fine. And we can debate that. You know, I, I, I'm a believer in it. I'm, 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 you know, I'm a believer because I've seen it in action. And right. I know the numbers point to, the reverse mortgage being a main financial, a, a mainstay financial planning tool for years and decades to come. I know what the numbers are. I know what the, the levels of senior housing wealth. There's seven point, almost seven point three trillion dollars of untapped equity with folks that are sixty two and older nationwide. That that's it's a, it's staggering numbers. But it's, it's one thing, again, you know, like Dave Ramsey, if you're not a believer, fine. Don't bash a product that's helped yeah. out so many folks over the years. Uh, you know, and, I, and I have story after story after story of folks that came to me hesitant. They didn't understand it. They needed to be educated. We involved their family. In many cases, we involved their financial advisor. You know, in my firm, 25% of our business comes from referrals from the financial planning community. Wow, if you were that's to ask incredible. me if that would have been the case 10 years ago, I would have left you out of the room. That's but right. financial advisors understand it. Higher net worth individuals understand it. I talked to a client today, Michael, that has a $4 million house. He's taking out a jumbo reverse mortgage. He has a $400,000 mortgage that we're eliminating. We're mm -hmm. paying that off. He's got a $3,200 a month mortgage payment on that. Eliminating the $3,200 a month mortgage payment. And he's going to have a line of credit for close to a million dollars. On a this is life changing. Home. This it's is life changing. changing. Yeah, it's life changing. And, and this is this is somebody who look. He he's amassed enough wealth to have a four million dollar home. He doesn't need a reverse mortgage. He has enough net worth, likely to to be able to live pretty comfortably in retirement. But he wants to make sure that he's going to be able to live his normal lifestyle. He's going to be able to spend what he wants to spend in retirement. 
But the other aspect of this he's looking at is look at look what the market's done over the past couple of weeks. That's right. If, if you have money in the market right now and you're yeah. nervous to turn the television on every day uh, or to read the newspaper or to look at your phone, how about integrating the wealth in your home? If you're somebody that has to take, I don't know, let's just say 4% from your investments just to live your normal lifestyle. Right. What if you could limit that to 3% or 2%? Right, the worst thing to do in an in an economic downturn where the where the market's going down is to have to continue to pull money from those diminishing accounts. So, if you have wealth in your home, being able to use that wealth as a hedge in a bear market, especially for folks that have higher dollar homes that have a lot of equity tied up in the home, it's an unbelievable strategy uh, that that should be out there more. You know, it, that's it, right. It needs to be. Uh, the, the general public needs to know about this. They, they need to know about what their options are right now because all they, all they, ha all there is right now is panic, and you have yes. folks that are panicking about losing money in the markets. There's options to protect and to preserve your retirement accounts, but you got to be proactive, and you yeah. got to make the call, and you have to understand what your options are. All right. So um, I, I want to talk about a topic that I know is uh, is near to dear to both of our hearts, and again, another part of the reverse mortgage world that is so underutilized, which would be the purchase reverse mortgage or the HECM for purchase or the H for P. Maybe if we didn't have so many names for it, people would understand it. Um, but again, the ability, and I want you to explain it because you're, 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 you're very smooth when you do it. Um, the ability for someone to purchase a home for X, let's say 500,000. And even with our new UPBs, with our lower balances for, you know, our lower loan amounts uh, for our viewers, you know, let's say they're in the mid sixties. So they are going to put up 300,000. We're going to lend them 200,000. They were planning on paying cash. That is one way. And I want you to go through that, but to have that extra 200,000 in your mid sixties to go back to your financial planner, and go, I, I didn't need this. Can you do something with it? My God is life changing. So I want to get your take on that. And then I want to talk about, because as always with you, time flies. We've got about yeah. 18 minutes left. But we got, I want to also talk about why what I just said doesn't work with the 1.6 million real estate agents in this country. And the reason I feel the, not that the product has failed us, but once again, how the industry has failed the product. But I'd like you to talk a little about the purchase reverse mortgage. The purchase is uh, it's the sleeping giant of our industry. I think we said it on the last show and the show before that. It continues to be the sleeping giant of our industry. <laughs> so pr prior to 2009, if you wanted to take a reverse mortgage out on a new home, you first had to buy the house, then take a reverse mortgage out. You had to incur two sets of closing costs. And so in 2009... Uh, the HECM for purchase or the H for P or the reverse purchase was implemented by Congress. It enables you to purchase a new home with a reverse mortgage. And so I think the simplest way to understand that is just to walk you through our most recent scenario of a client that came to us by way of referral. We had a financial advisor reach out to us and he said, Steve, I have a client that has two issues. One, they're in too much home, right? It's three stories. Uh, they need to be on one floor. They're set, I believe they were 74 and 72. Uh, good health, but it, it just wasn't a home that was going to be suitable for their lifestyle uh, now and especially later on down the road. And then they have cash flow issues. Two problems. Home isn't suitable for them to re retire in and live in long term. And they were short on some cash. The house was $400,000. They had a mortgage for $100,000. Okay. They sold the $400,000 home. Now they net $300,000. Now there's there's commissions and, and but let's just let's use round numbers. Yeah, absolutely. They, they walk with three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, what they didn't want to sacrifice was the amenities that they had in the four hundred thousand dollar home. They had granite countertops. They had a nice marble tile shower. Uh, nice glass doors in the shower. It was it was a very it was a nice home. So they didn't want to sacrifice the amenities, and their their fear was to buy a home that they could afford they were going to have to sacrifice because they were looking at having to pay cash because they didn't want to burden themselves with a mortgage payment later in life. So they were, they were ideally looking for a home that was in the vicinity of $200,000 so they could use the you know, part of the 300 that they just walked with from the sale from their home and leave a little extra for, you know, to, to supplement their cash. 
referral partner said, hey, why don't you call Steve? We've heard about this reverse mortgage program. Steve, you know, I, I do some webinars and I, I try to educate our referral partners as well. And uh, the education worked because he sent the referral over to me. We had a conversation with the client and sent them to a realtor partner here locally. We identified a $300,000 home, okay? A rancher, all one story. It was the perfect home. But they didn't want to pay $300,000 in cash that they just walked with because they would deplete every dollar from the sale from that home. With a reverse mortgage for purchase, you basically put down 50%. The reverse mortgage covers the additional 50%. Okay. Moving forward, if you want to make mortgage payments, if and when it works for you, you can. If not, you can defer payback until you leave the home. Okay. So what they just were able to do was they put down $150,000 from the 300. dollars mm -hmm. They bought the $300,000 home for $150,000 in cash. There are three responsibilities moving forward. They got to pay their taxes. They got to pay their homeowner's insurance. They got to maintain the home. There is no monthly mortgage payment required, although they can choose to make one if they want to. They then turned around and gave $150,000 in cash to their financial advisor to supplement their retirement income. So the, the exact issues that these, that these clients had, the home was too much home. It wasn't suitable for them. And they had some cash flow issues in retirement. Both of those issues were resolved because of the Heckam for purchase, because of their ability to buy a home with a reverse mortgage and and pro and, and really prolong their retirement by being able to supplement it with that. Addition. Exactly. Yeah. What did that hundred and again? Imagine going to a financial planner and going, "I have this hundred and fifty thousand that I didn't plan on having. Yeah. I don't need to touch it. Yeah. Tax free. Completely tax free. Yeah. I didn't, I don't need to touch it for the next 20 years. Can you do something to make sure I don't run out of money with, I mean, again, life changing yeah. capabilities. Um, and it's just a perfect example. I wondered for years as I did <clears throat> my Heckam for purchase or my purchase reverse mortgage classes, uh, in about 15, 20 States. Now I only do them in Florida every now and then in New Jersey. Um, and I wondered for years, how come I got 25 people, 50? My, my record was like 160. I get the applause. I get the hugs. Oh, my God, this is incredible. And then I get no business. Um, you know, a lot of people say that's the realtor, you know, doing business with realtors. I, I hear this all the time. It's like herding cats. Well, as, a, yeah, as an old traditional mortgage guy um, that fell in love with reverse mortgages 11 years ago, but has been doing all mortgages for 38 years. Uh, realtors are great people. Yes, most of them, you know, it's the 80-20 rule. Sometimes I think it's the 90-10 rule. Um, but most, you know, the great majority of real estate agents uh, don't sell any houses or they sell to their moms, their dads, their high school friends, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, here's a secret that nobody knows. It's the same exact thing in the mortgage business. You know, oh, everybody's yeah. like it's a miss and the insurance business and in the sales business. But the ones that do do this for a living are professionals. They're family people. Yes, they have loyalty. I mean, their children are in the soccer leagues and the little. These are people like us, and they care about their clients. And um, one day it just struck me um, while I was in front of 40 or 50 of them, and they were smiling, that I'm looking at a group of 40 or 50 type A individuals not one person in the room was on salary, including me. And I was, and here I was giving them, I think, very ethical, moral, and altruistic reasons they should use this product. And I know most of them were in that room going, I wonder how I'm going to make my mortgage payment next month. Yeah. Or, oh my God, next year my daughter goes to college. So I changed it a little. You and I discussed that. I do the presentation that you just did. But I've added one more thing to it. Now it's been about two years. And I will say in our little company in Florida, um, you know, I'm only doing a couple of purchases a month. We do more traditional reverse and we do more regular mortgages. But I have started to get a more steady flow of purchase reverse mortgages when I added a few slides um, to my presentation with FAR. Florida uh, Association of Real Estate's permission, of course, because they get CE credit, that this is probably the only ethical and moral upsell 
that exists in this country. And we take that example of what you were just talking about, same numbers, $400,000 house that they own. They only owed 100 on it. They net 300. They come down to Florida. And yet they find that if they don't spend 400 again, they're not going to have the amenities that they want. So when you show them those $300,000 houses, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, and the tile is eight inches, not 18, and the countertops are for mica, um, they're not marble, take them from that $300,000 house to that $400,000 house. Show it to them. They'll fall in love with it. Can we buy this for $300,000? Of course not. But let me tell you about the purchase reverse mortgage. And then using those same figures, they buy that $400,000 house. They put approximately half up. They didn't settle for something less. They got their dream retirement home. They got their um, absolute goal of no monthly principal and interest payment. Number That's the first two. Number three, now they're going back to their financial planner going, I know you thought I was going to spend 300, but I only put 200 down. Here's that extra 100 grand. And then I used to say, I hate to say this, but I don't hate to say it anymore. This is where the real estate agents went, what? Say that again. What? what? Number four, their commission went up 33% because they didn't sell a $300,000 house. They sold a $400,000 house. And I hate to bring the greed and capitalism in it. But I think, again, one of the mistakes the industry has made is trying to educate 1.6 million real estate agents that are on commission. And I think that you have to show them that there is a way legally, ethically, morally, because I have people, now that I do that, I have people come up to me after the class go, that's it. You're doubling my income, Michael. I don't care if they want a $100,000 house, I'm selling them a 200. If they want a 400, I'm selling. No, no, no. That's immoral the taxes, the lawn you know, maintenance, the water bill. But in my area of Florida, or most of Florida, that three to 400,000 is a small raise in taxes. But it's the same square footage. It's a newer neighborhood. It's the same lawn maintenance. You know, I, I, sleep, at, I sleep well at nights knowing I put these people into their dream home. So, um, and, and many people disagree with, with what I'm saying. Um, you know, using it as an upsell. Um, but I think, again, when done by honest reverse mortgage people with honest real estate agents, all you're doing is giving seniors their dream retirement home. I mean, look, I, I'm a big believer in you put the facts in front of folks and you let them make the most educated decision exactly. they can make, right? So why not, why not educate them as to all the products that are available the pros, the cons, the benefits, the negatives, and, and let somebody make an, an informed decision. Mm -hmm. you know? And, and if, the, if the reverse purchase is that decision, then, then great. If they, at 70 years old, you know, in, in would prefer a traditional mortgage because that's what they're comfortable with, and that's fine right. too. That's but, right. But let's, let's make sure that, that the knowledge and the information is out there. Uh, for us, you know, financial advisors are the best referral partners yes. uh, because they get it. They get that the, the home is where the heart is, but it's also where the wealth is. Uh, and, and if somebody is going to live comfortably with peace of mind well into their 80s, 90s, and maybe even over 100 years old, you're going to have to likely tap into that wealth, that pool of wealth, in order to maintain your lifestyle. Whether There's that's no to buy a house with the reverse or whether that's to take out a reverse mortgage line of credit or, or turn on a basically an annuity from the value in your home that's going to supplement your cash flow later on in life. There's a lot of ways to structure it, but it starts with education and empowerment. Education, education, education. It's always the way. Well, <clears throat> with only a couple of minutes left, um, always enjoy you being here. Uh, you do know that a few different things, now we have to add the coronavirus, has stopped our podcast that was supposed to start in January, and it's almost in April. Uh, but we will be doing a podcast soon with a panel of people. Uh, and I'm really hoping that you're going to be part of that panel. But the main, the main subjects of that um, podcast, which is going to be a little more direct, i got to be honest with you, than the TV show. Uh, it's going to be called the 62 Who Knew uh, Longevity, uh, 62 Who Knew Podcast, but the Longevity Initiative. And um, we are going to talk about 
deeper things. We are going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about, I'm going to bring in population experts, which I really don't do to the show. We're going to bring in experts to say, you know, that we are really going to be living to close to 100 years old soon. Do we have enough supermarkets? Are there enough farmers? You know, that's the greatest industry in the world, but people are leaving it. The young people for the last 30, 40 years don't want to be farmers with their children. There's only 30 seconds left. What about world population? If we all start living to be 95 and 100, what about senior housing, which we have a shortage on now? Um, and I really hope you'll be part of uh, that overall panel because I just love your input of, uh, you know, I, I just love listening to you about this. Uh, sometimes I listen to your stuff during the day and I go, God, I wish I had time to do more <laughs> videos. But damn, Steve's good at it. I don't have to. So we got the, seven the seconds. The admiration is mutual. I can promise uh, you that. Thank you. Three seconds left. Thank you so much. Next week. Long-term care insurance, national expert. Thank you so much, Steve, for Thank being you. here. And I appreciate safe. everything. Be healthy. You too. Oh, stay healthy. Keep those little girls healthy. All righty. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.